What's up guys? So I just got home from work and as some of you know I'm getting ready to go to the track this weekend. The track being the quarter mile at Auto Club Speedway. So I'm doing a little bit of prep to the car and I figured I'd just shoot a little bit of what I'm doing. I'm just chilling, hanging out with the puppy. She's eating her little raccoon over there. And we're just gonna do some basic stuff today. So these are kind of general guidelines, things you might want to check out before you take your car to the track. Now I noticed the front tires have quite a bit more tread than the rears, and since I'm taking the car drag racing, I'm gonna put the better tires on the back for more straight line traction. Another thing you want to check before you bring your car to any track is how much brake pad life you have left. Probably have about six or seven millimeters of pad left. When you start to get below five, you just want to put replacing the pads in the back of your mind. Also, just a good old suspension bolt check never hurts, especially if you haven't done it before or haven't done it in a long time. Just throw a wrench on all the bolts that hold the control arms on, the coilovers, anti sway bars, everything. Just throw a wrench on there, make sure everything's good and tight. Okay, you see this? This is after I washed the rear wheel. People always ask me, why oh, your wheels always so dirty? Oh, you finally clean your wheels. See this? That's after scrubbing it with soap. That is from my beautiful Carbotech AX6 brake pads, which perform amazing, but the dust, oh my God. It's not just the amount of dust, it's how hard the dust is on the paint. I literally sand off the dust. I know that sounds brutal, but I just use 3000 grit sandpaper and wet sand it and it comes right off pretty easy. I know it's probably not that great for the paint, but they usually only do it when the car is gonna have an extra special video shoot or photo shoot, which is happening this weekend. Pretty easy, comes out real clean. Yes, I have used even rubbing compound. It would probably take me at least an hour per wheel to use rubbing compound to get this off, so I've just degraded to using 3000 grit. If someday the paint gets so bad, I'll just have them resprayed. really not that big of a deal. I'm also messing with the rear suspension a little bit. I run some spring preload in the rear. That's one of the ways I can run the car a little bit lower right height and help with the bottoming out is Miatas have really limited rear suspension travel. So I'm actually gonna take the preload out to soften up the rear end a little bit for drag racing application, hopefully help it launch better, get off the line a little bit better. For everyone that's wondering what kind of coilovers I'm running, I'm actually gonna be doing a review and install video on my main channel here probably in the next few weeks so you will have to wait to find out all that information. How can I put the nuts on if there's a dog in the way? Oh, okay, I'm still gonna put them on. I'm still gonna put them on. So hopefully between softening up the rear suspension a bit and putting the better tires on the back, I'll be able to get a little more traction. The springs are still way too stiff for drag racing and these NCO1s are definitely the opposite of a drag race tire also. They have really stiff sidewalls. The only thing they have going for them is they do have a lot of grip as far as the rubber compound is concerned. A yeah, real drag racing tire will have more flex in the sidewall so when you launch the car it's less likely to snap loose and get wheel spin. And I'll probably run them at 15 psi or something just to get a little bit of extra footprint. Another thing you want to do before you go to the track, scope out your engine bay, check those hoses, stuff like this right here. See how it's seeping a little bit? That's not kosher, so I gotta replace these little turbo lines and stuff like that that are leaking. If you go out to the track, especially the drag strip, and you blow one of these stupid lines that are like two bucks and take two minutes to replace, not only are you gonna be bummed out because you're gonna be stranded and you're not racing anymore, but the 30 people that were behind you lined up at the strip are gonna be bummed out because they have to go out and burn off all the coolant. It's just simple stuff like this. You should always be checking it anyways, but definitely before you go to the track, check all your coolant lines, oil lines, make sure you got no new leaks, cracked hoses, anything showing signs of wear. Simple stuff, guys. All right, so just got done checking the oil, checking these four very important nuts right there between the manifold and the turbo. They love to come loose, and if they come loose enough, it starts leaking exhaust, and you will lose all of your spool up. Also check the coolant, brake fluid, any other fluid I got in there. So I'm just gonna take it out for a spin, make sure everything's all good, and we should be ready for Saturday. Now there is one theory that applies to the track that's the same as going to the gym. You don't forget leg day. One very effective exercise to make sure that you get the most out of your leg day is squats. So why don't you say we go do some squats? 
want to do a couple quick little first gear pulls just to see what the traction's like and I'll show you guys how much the car squats. It's no, by no means drag spec, but um, it might look cool. It'll probably sound cool. I got the microphone on the turbo, so you guys seem to like that. still cold and they're uh, they're not aired down either so I don't expect a whole lot try another hit I'll try a little less throttle see if we can reduce that wheel spin and hook up a little better quite a bit of spin so hopefully after I can do a burnout at the track get a little bit of heat into the tires have them aired down and hope that the track is actually a little bit stickier than your average street I'm hoping that the car is gonna hook up better and I'll be able to do some decent 60 foot times what I'm really shooting for is the trap speed I'm shooting for 112 plus because that'll basically verify that the car is actually 276 horsepower and it's not just like a weird dyno calibration like a bunch of people on the internet are saying so we'll see I'm finishing up in the dark here as always. I think I'm pretty much ready for Saturday. It's gonna be a good time no matter what happens. If you like the video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I'll see you in the next one.